Hi, in this video, we are going to explore and test these UWB modules, the Ultra Wideband Trans Receiver Modules. First, we will see brief introduction to Ultra Wideband Radio Technology. Then, we will see about datasheet, features, specifications of this UWB module. And finally, we will design one distance measurement application project using this awesome technology. So, without any further delays, let's get started. Please note that this will be bid descriptive and lengthy video. You can use section timestamps and chapters given in video description to jump over to any desired topic of this video. So, what does actually mean by UWB, the ultra wideband? As standard Wikipedia definition says, ultra wideband or UWB or ultra band is a radio technology that can use a very low energy level for short range, high bandwidth communications over a large portion of the radio spectrum. Let's simplify this. In our daily life, we use different wireless or radio technologies for communication, like TV and radio broadcasting, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS and BLE in our smartphones and laptops, Zigbee technology in home automation, RF radio frequency technology in car key unlocking, then 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, wireless technologies for mobile telecommunication and many more. So, these all are radio technologies. Similarly, ultra-wideband is also a short-range wireless communication technology, which uses radio waves. So, what differentiate all these technologies from each other? Yes, you guessed it right. The frequency and range. Each of these radio technologies operate at specific standard radio frequency and coverage. Bandwidth in wireless communication encompasses the range of frequencies that a wireless signal occupies. The wider the frequency range, the higher the potential data transfer rate. Data rate is nothing but capacity of a wireless communication channel, representing the amount of data that can be transmitted over the channel in a given amount of time. It is usually measured in BPS, bits per second, kbps, kilobits per second, mbps, megabits per seconds, or gbps, gigabits per second. Then, range means how long you can transmit the signal using these wireless technologies. So, in this image, you can see typical communication ranges for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, LoRa, and other wireless technologies. Similarly, ultra-wideband can have communication range up to 50 to 100 meters. That is up to 300 feet. UWB comes in same category like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, that is short-range wireless communication. The UWB Trans Receiver Module, which we are going to review, has communication range up to 100 meters in open field environment. Now, let's understand ultra-wideband using these images. So you can see here in this graph, radio technologies are differentiated using range and data rate. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Ultra Wideband, NFC, all comes in short range. 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G comes in long range cellular communication. And LoRa, Sigfox, narrow band IoT comes in LP band category means low power wide area network category. So UWB technology is very low energy, but at the same time, it can send high amounts of data over short distances. Here in another graph, the power versus bandwidth graph. You can see the ultra wideband have low power, but much wider bandwidth comparing to other radio communication systems. Like 2G, 3G mobile phones, and Wi-Fi. Then, this spectrum of ultra-wideband shows UWB ranges from 3.1 GHz to 10.6 GHz, whereas we know there is standard 2.4 GHz band assigned for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and Zigbee. On other hand, Wi-Fi 5 has 5 GHz band, 
and GPS comes with 1.6 GHz frequency. You can see, ultra-wideband signal has low spectral density than other radios, but bit higher than noise floor. So, there is no chance of interference with other technologies. So, in a nutshell, UWB means, the ultra-wideband, is a short-range wireless communication technology which uses radio waves. It operates over a very wide bandwidth, as the name suggests, and generates short pulses of radio energy. UWB technology is very low energy, but at the same time, it can send high amounts of data over short distances. Since the signal has low spectral density, it doesn't interfere with narrowband transmissions like Wi-Fi and is hard to detect. Another advantage is that it is resilient to multipath. That makes it a great technology to use indoors. Now, you must have been thinking where this elegant radio technology is being used in our daily life. So, ultra-wideband has a wide range of applications. Accuracy and distance measurement is a key feature of UWB technology. Hence, it revolutionized real-time locationing with its precise and reliable capabilities. Ultra-wideband plays a crucial role in various industries, such as logistics, healthcare, manufacturing, and transportation. So, UWB can be used in real-time location finding in indoor environments where GPS signals may be unreliable. In logistics, ultra-wideband enables efficient inventory tracking, reducing losses, and optimizing operations. Healthcare benefits from UWB are in asset tracking, patient flow optimization, and improved care coordination. In manufacturing, ultra-wideband streamlines inventory management and enhances production efficiency through accurate tracking of materials and tools. UWB also supports route planning, fleet management, and vehicle security in transportation systems. The next main application is radar. UWB used in implementation of synthetic aperture radar, SAR technology. It is a form of radar that is used to create two-dimensional images or three-dimensional reconstructions of objects, such as landscapes. In healthcare, Ultra-wideband pulse Doppler radars have also been used to monitor vital signs of the human body, such as heart rate and respiration signals, as well as human gait analysis and fall detection. Ultra-wideband technology can play a significant role in industrial applications, such as automation and robotics, worker safety and proximity sensing, asset tracking and management. Let's see about these applications in detail. So. Its high data rate and low latency enable real-time communication and control between machines and systems. Ultra-wideband-based communication protocols ensure reliable and secure data transmission, enabling precise coordination and synchronization of automated processes. This enhances manufacturing efficiency, reduces errors, and improves overall productivity. UWB can also be integrated into robotic systems to enable precise localization, object detection, and collision avoidance, further enhancing the safety and efficiency of industrial automation. Worker safety is a concern in industrial settings. UWB technology provides effective proximity sensing and worker safety solutions. By equipping workers with ultra-wideband-enabled devices, or badges, companies can monitor their location and movement in real time. Ultra-wideband-based systems can detect potential collisions between workers and machinery, issuing timely warnings to prevent accidents. Moreover, UWB technology allows for the creation of safety zones and controlled access areas, ensuring the safe interaction of workers with hazardous equipment or restricted zones. This helps enhance workplace safety, reduce accidents, and protect employees from potential hazards. Efficient asset tracking and management are crucial for industrial operations. UWB enables precise and real-time tracking of assets within industrial facilities. By attaching UWB tags to equipment, tools, and inventory, companies can monitor their location, movement, and utilization. This enhances inventory management, reduces asset loss, minimizes downtime, 
and streamlines maintenance processes. Ultra-wideband-based asset tracking systems provide accurate and reliable data, empowering businesses to optimize their resource allocation and improve overall operational efficiency. In autonomous vehicles, UWB's precise positioning and ranging capabilities enable collision avoidance and centimeter-level localization accuracy, surpassing traditional GPS systems. Moreover, its high data rate and low latency facilitate seamless vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. Now let's discuss most important and popular UWB application, mobile devices with ultra-wideband capability. For that, let me take you to the Wikipedia page of this technology. Here is the one. Let's see. So, you can see, you will get all other information like characteristic and theory if you want to know more. But let's see the mobile devices application. So you can see down here, Ultra Wideband has been adopted and included by leading smartphone manufacturers like Apple, Samsung and Xiaomi in their featured products. Like, Apple launched the first three phones with Ultra Wideband capabilities in September 2019, namely, the iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, and iPhone 11 Pro Max. Then, Apple also launched Series 6 of Apple Watch and AirTags in September 2020, which features UWB. Then, Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, Galaxy S21 Plus, and Galaxy S21 Ultra also began supporting Ultra Wideband, along with the Samsung Galaxy Smart Tag Plus. The Xiaomi Mix 4 released in August 2021, supports UWB, and offers the capability of connecting to selected AIoT devices. To elaborate this in more detail, let's check out the table given below here, which is the list of ultra-wideband products or chips launched by leading companies like Microchip, NXP, Apple, Samsung, and many more. Now let me show you the very interesting example of UWB utilization. So, Apple inducted ultra-wideband in its U1 series of processors, which are based on Cortex-M4 architecture. This includes all these Apple products like iPhone 11 to iPhone 15, iWatch, HomePod, AirTags, and AirPods Pro. Now let's see this product, AirPods Pro second generation. I will show you where you will find utilization of UWB in this product. For that let's go to Apple website and AirPod link. This is the one, so UWB enables spatial awareness in smartphone and AirPods Pro, which give it ability to recognize the surrounding and objects around it. One way to think of it as a radar that can continuously scan the entire room and precisely lock onto an object like a laser beam to discover its location and communicate data. UWB in conjunction with GPS enables this feature of AirPod. That is, find my with precision finding. So, as they said here, the U1 chip enables find my with precision finding for your case, so you can locate it exactly. You could also use find my with proximity view if you lose track of your AirPods Pro. So, with this feature you can find your AirPods with pinpoint accuracy. This is very fascinating, isn't it? Now, in this context, we are going to see hardware module, which is ultra wideband transceiver module, RYUW122. It is manufactured by company named Reacts. At the end of this video tutorial, we will use this hardware to build a project, which will show demonstration of distance measurement using ultra wideband radio technology. So, as we said earlier, we are going to make distance measurement application or project using this UWB transceiver module. But before that, let's see the brief theory about how ultra wideband is used for distance measurement and real time location finding. Ultra wideband was formerly known as pulse radio. This technology operates by generating billions of radio pulses transmitted at rapid intervals forming intricate patterns across a broad frequency range, typically spanning at least 500 MHz, 
or 20% of the center frequency. The operating concept is simple. Once a device that is equipped with an ultra-wideband radio, such as a smartphone wristband or smart key, comes into range of another UWB device. The devices start ranging. The ranging is done by performing time of flight means TOF measurements between the devices. The time of flight is calculated by measuring the round-trip time of challenge or response packets. Ultra-wideband technology uses time of flight to determine the distance between peers. TOF measures the propagation time that it takes for the RF signal to travel between the transmitter and receiver. This time measurement multiplied by the speed of light determines the distance with high accuracy. These patterns are then received and analyzed by the recipient device, which decodes the incoming signals into usable data. Although primarily designed for rapid data transfer over short distances, the unique characteristics of UWB signals also enable precise localization of devices. Enough of this theory, now, let's see two important documents about this ultra-wideband transceiver module. Those are Datasheet and AD Commands Guide. Datasheet gives details about features, pinout, electrical, mechanical characteristics, and specifications. On other hand, the AT Command Guide will guide you for how to configure this ultra-wideband module with various operating modes and how to use it for distance measurement. So first we will see Datasheet. Let's open this document. Generally, the datasheets contain vast information about hardware. We will be only focusing on important aspects. So, this is a 6.5 and 8 GHz antenna transceiver module, which features UART interface. In product description, they mention, this is high quality ultra wideband module, and it is good for secure and precise distance measurement. Here are some features of this module. This module can be controlled by AKI commands. It provides precise location and data transfer simultaneously and also features AES 128-bit encryption. Interesting applications of this ultra-wideband modules are precise RTLS with two ways ranging and location-aware wireless sensor networks. Then next, here is the block diagram of this hardware is given, which shows internals of this module. Then next are pin descriptions and schematics. Now let's see some important electrical specs of this UWB module. First is power supply. This module typically requires 3.3 volts to operate. Frequency range is 6.5 GHz to 8 GHz. Communication range is up to 100 meters in open field environment. We will test this range specification in our next video of range testing experiment. Then. Location accuracy is 10 cm in open field environment. It draws more current in tag mode than anchor mode. Default baud rate is 115200. Now most important, please note that input output means the I.O. pins of this module are 3.3 volts tolerant, not 5 volt tolerant. You can see that here, in digital input output voltage levels, so, we have to use voltage level shifter or divider if we want to interface this module with Arduino or other 5 volts TTL logic level boards. Alright, this is all about datasheet and important specs of this module. You can go through this document if you want to know more about design information and antenna specs. In the description of this video, we will share links to download this document. Okay. This was all about Datasheet. Now let's explore another important document, that is the AT Command Guide. Let's check out the AT Commands Guide for this module. So here is the one, the RYUW122 Modules AT Command Guide. So, here is 8-step notification which summarizes the configuration of AT Commands. Let's see these steps in detail. 
So, as we've seen earlier in theory that, there are two modes of operation of ultra-wideband modules, either anchor mode or tag mode. You can configure this hardware module in any mode, but for our distance measurement application, we need one anchor and one tag module. Please note that, first you must use AT plus mode command to set the module as anchor or tag. Then next, use AT plus network ID command to set the ultra wideband network group. Only those modules that set with the same network ID can communicate with each other. We will learn this UWB networking concept in detail in network structure diagram explanation in coming session. Then next, use AD plus address command to set the unique addresses to both anchor and tag. So, in a given network, there are different addresses for anchor and tag, but network ID will be similar for all devices in that network. Then, use AD plus C pin to set the ultra wideband network encryption password. Only those modules that set with the same encryption password will be able to decode the data correctly. Now, after these four main configurations, which are mode, address, network ID, and password, last thing is sending and receiving data between these two modules. So, if you want to transmit data to anchor from tag, you must use AE plus tag send command. And most important, if you want to transmit data to tag from anchor and obtain the distance between, you must use AE plus anchor send command. Okay, now, as we promised earlier in this video, let's see the ultra wideband networking structure diagram and some important points. For that, let's get back to the AT commands guide document. Okay, here is the that figure shows network structure. This gives us overview about how should be our YUW-122 modules ultra-wideband network. So you can see, they have given two networks here, which have their unique network IDs. So, every network must have unique network ID. In these networks, there are multiple anchors and tags. But note that, if the network ID or password is different, then no node from one network can communicate with other network's nodes. So, this anchor 4 cannot communicate with this tag 1 of this other network, since they are part of different networks. Likewise, each anchor and tag also have their unique addresses, and they can send and receive data to or from each other using their unique addresses. All right. Now let's see the practical demo of AT command configuration of our YUW module. For that, you have to connect this UWB module serially to PC or laptop using USB to serial adapter. Here is the circuit diagram for connecting ultraband module. Pin connections are given in details and with color coding, so it's easy to replicate. Please note that you have to select logic level to 3.3 volts and supply power of same level, 3.3 volts. Keep this jumper cap on 3.3 volts if you are using similar type of serial adapter. Now, to test the distance measurement, we need to configure two different UWB modules. So, one need to be configured as anchor and other as tag. For that, Let's see the AT commands guide again. So, there are eight different steps to configure the RIUW-122 module for distance measurement application. We have seen these steps in detail in previous session. Then we have also seen this network structure in detail now next, let's see AT command set. So you can see as they said here, when you use AT commands, it is required to key in enter or slash R and slash N at the end of all AT commands. Then for query, add question mark at the end of the commands to ask the current setting value. Also, 
it is required to wait until the module replies plus OK, so that you can execute the next AE command. So, please remember these things while issuing AE commands. Then, they have given syntaxes and standard responses for each and every AD command. Then here is the reset command. Next is, very important, the mode command. This sets the wireless mode of the module. There are three modes respectively. Tag mode which is a default mode, then anchor mode, and sleep mode. They have also given an example of how to set the anchor mode. You can query about which mode is running currently using this query command. You just have to add question mark at the end of command, just like this. Then next command is AD plus IPR. To set the serial communication baud rate. By default, it is set to 11.52.00. Next are channel and bandwidth commands, which you can set similarly like previous ones. Then next important command is network ID. It should be same for devices in that particular network. They have given syntax and example. You can also query network ID using query command. Please note that ID should be in 8 bytes ASCII format. Then next command is address. It sets the address of UWB module. Like previous, they have given syntax, response, and example with query. Then by using next UID command, you can set 96-bit unique ID of the module. Next is cpin command, which set the password for network. So data on network can only be recognized when password is correct. We have discussed this in network structure diagram earlier. Okay, next command is anchor send command. Used to send the data from anchor to tag. There is syntax of this command. You have to add 8 bit tag address. Payload length means data length and data in ASCII format. They have also shown example, which you can check out here. The next command is tag send command. This command is for sending data to the anchor module from tag module and wait for the anchor to read it. So, here is the format of that command. And here is detailed example. Then next two commands are subcommands. First is anchor receive, which shows the received data of anchor actively. Please note that this command is a sub command, which gets executed automatically after anchor send command. As a response of it, and also returns the distance between anchor and tag. You do not need to deliberately issue this command. This is the important command for our project of distance measurement. Okay, then next, there are several other commands like tag send and receive which you can learn from here. There are also error codes to find out the errors occurred while execution of commands. You can study all these in this document. And finally, here is the table of sequence of commands which we are going to use to configure the UWB modules for distance measurement application. They have given commands for both anchor and tag modes. So, here on this notepad we have copied these commands. We will use these in AD command configuration demo. We will copy all commands for anchor mode separately and tag mode separately. Now let's see this in practical demo. Here, we have connected two UWB modules using USB to serial adapter modules to laptop. Please remember to keep both modules face-to-face -face in complete line of sight. It is mandatory for communication between two modules, and it also feasible to manually measure the distance between them. So once you connect to your laptop or PC, serial ports or COM ports get enumerated in Device Manager. So now, we have connected ultra-wideband modules. Let's go to the device manager screen of laptop. Here, you can see both modules got listed as serial communication ports, COM34 and COM60. In your case, these numbers may be different. Here, please note down the COM port numbers. Then open an Arduino IDE serial monitor 
or any other serial terminal software like PuTTY or TerraTerm etc. So, here we have opened two instances of serial monitors. Then, open the command sequence, which we have copied from Datasheet. Okay, now let's connect to the UWB modules via this terminal software. We will first connect a UWB module, which we desire to be configured as Anchor. So, select the COM port number which we have noted earlier, then select the baud rate, which is 115200, then click on connect. OK, likewise for another node, which is to be a tag node. Select correct COM port, baud rate, and then click on connect button to connect. Now, we have connected to both the modules. Then go to this field of terminal software. Here you have to write the AT commands and use this send button to issue the commands. Okay, please note important thing here. As we've seen earlier in AT commands guide, you have to send carriage return slash R and new line character slash N along with the command. For that, this CR plus LF option is ticked. So, you can see, as soon as you send AD command, module responds, plus OK is printed here in response window. Similarly for second module, response got enumerated here. OK, now let's configure both the modules. First configure the RF modes of these ultraband modules. First is the anchor mode. AT plus mode is equal to 1, which will set that module in anchor mode. You can query its status using query command. Likewise, the first module is configured as anchor mode. Send AT plus mode is equals to 0 to set second module in tag mode. Then next is the network ID. We are going to use these both modules in same network, so we have to set their network IDs similar, like shown here. So, for both modules, anchor and tag, network ID should be similar, in this case 5. Then next, though network ID is similar, module address must be different. So, we will set different unique addresses for anchor and tag. Now, after the address, next thing is, CPIN means Network Encryption Password. It must be similar for both devices, as they are part of same network. As this is 32 characters long password, we will keep this in its standard format. Now after all these settings, let's send test signal from anchor to tag. So please note, the command format of anchor send command, which includes address of tag, which is 9, then payload length, which is 4, and payload data, that is word test. Now here, pay attention, as soon as we send this command, we will get response with distance value in centimeters. Please note that, this anchor receive command is sub command, and it get automatically executed by module after we issued anchor send command. 
Likewise, for tag, this tag receives subcommand. It get automatically executed as soon as data from anchor received. So, you can see, we are getting different distance values for each transmission, but those are very small. This is because, UWB modules are placed close to each other on our disk. We have seen this earlier. So, in this way you can configure our YUW122 ultra wideband modules using AT commands, to get distance measurements. We will use similar kind of configuration in our DIY project. Let's see the circuit diagram and code. So, we are going to build distance measurement application using Reax's ultra wideband module. There will be two ultra wideband modules, or we can say nodes. We will measure distance between two modules using ultra wideband technology, as we have seen in datasheet of this module. Distance measurement is one of the main applications of this module. Then below here in datasheet, in the section of specifications, we have seen location accuracy of this module is 10 centimeters in open field environment. And the typical range of communication is up to 100 meters. Okay. Let's go forward and verify it. This is a circuit schematic for anchor node. And this is for tag node. Yes, you guessed it right. Both schematics are same. Here, we have interfaced this RYUW122 module with node MCU ESP32 development board. Also, to display the distance, we have connected small SSD1306 OLED display. There is one reset button for manually resetting UWB module. You can see, all wiring connections are in color coding and properly commented. Hence, you can easily track them. You will get this schematic on our GitHub page. Links will be shared in the video description. This is high resolution image. You can zoom it further if you want for more detailing. Alright, now let's know about programming. So here is the code. This code is for anchor node. You can see, all code is well commented. We have added detailed comments to each important code snippet, functions, and subroutines to guide you through these code implementations. We have added comments for each section of the program to easily understand for what purpose that code snippet is used there. Therefore, you can understand what's going on with these functions and variables. Let me show you the key points. Please note that we have not included configuration AT commands in code since we have already pre-configured UWB modules using manual method, which we discussed earlier in video. Then in code, at first, we have included all necessary libraries like display and I2C. Then we define display related variables, like display resolution. Here we created object instance named display. You can refer Adafruit display library for more details about this declaration. Then next, this is bitmap array for displaying our company logo on OLED display. Okay, here we have created string variable for Ankerson command. Its format is given here. Then next, in setup loop, we initialize two serial UARTs. One is for sending data to serially connected ultra wideband module in anchor mode. And another one is for us to get logs or responses of program execution. Then next, display will be initialized and default screen will be displayed. Then next function is send message or command function. In this, we send the AT command 
Ankerson command string, which we defined earlier, to serial port which is connected to UWB module. So, here we send this command. Then, next function we use for parsing the incoming serial data string. Going forward, next function is for checking availability of serial data on input port. You can see, we have added detailed comments to this function. Since this is very important function, here we extract distance from serial AD command response. Please note, this code is designed with simple coding paradigm, so we do not check for AT command responses and error codes. Finally in main loop, we send anchor send AT command and check for response at some regular interval of time. That is 10 seconds. In a nutshell, in this code, we write and send anchor send AT command to serial port and then serially listen for incoming response. The response which will consist of distance of anchor node from tag node. So, this is all about code of anchor node. Now let's see the code for tag node. So let's open it. Here is the code for ultra wideband tag node. Similar to previous code, this code is also well commented and described with step by step manner. As we said earlier, we have pre-configured this tag UWB module using manual method, which we discussed in video. In this code, we only listen for incoming UWB data from Anchor, which will be on serial 1. Then we will print that serial data on default serial port to get information about communication status. Okay, so this is all about programming. Besides, if you have any doubts, questions or suggestions, or found any bugs in code, please feel free to contact us on WhatsApp or Telegram. All these source code will be available on Project's GitHub repository on our GitHub page. We will share all the links in description. Okay, now, let's see the demo of the project. In demo, you can see distance measurement application. Accuracy of this reacts our YUW122 ultra wideband module is quite impressive. It gives very precise distance readings, up to 50 to 80 meters, in open environment provided with clear line of sight.
Okay, so, in this way, we have seen, overview, features, specification and application of these amazing ultra-wideband technology trans receiver module, RYEW-122. In future, we will try to make more projects using this amazing hardware. Stay tuned for more projects and tech updates. If you face any difficulty in replicating our DIY projects, feel free to ping us on Telegram or WhatsApp. You can also send us email at info at the rate make to explore.com. We would be happy to help.